Welcome GDLers, this is Bruce from Barking Dog Bim and we're going to continue developing our user interface for our desk that we've been working on. In this episode we're going to be looking at the infields in more detail and some strategies on how to make your scripting life easier when it comes to user interfaces. So let's add an infield now. We've got our page at the top here. We'll say our outfield. It's not page one. And let's put in an infield. And it's UI infield. What's the syntax? So we've got UI infield, the declaration. We've got a name, an X and a Y position, and a width and a height. That's what we must declare. The rest is all optional which I'll get to later. So UI infield, the name will be, I'll hide that, desktop type. It's in position X, let's make it 100, and Y will be zero. The width will be, let's say 70, and the height will be 19. So it's not quite wide enough, but we've got our infield there. Let's just tweak this a little bit, make it 170 wide, 170 wide, and position 80. It's a bit wide, and this is the process of doing your interface, trying to figure out what looks good. That's a little bit wide, so let's, 70 was too narrow, 170 is too wide, let's go 120. That'll do. Happy with that. Now you'll notice here that the outfield and the infield don't look right. The outfield's a little bit too high. And so what I have concluded is that you need to add about three pixels to the outfield in order to make it line up with your infields. And that looks okay. Desktop type is chamfered. Now, because I've done my parameter script, created a selection set, that automatically comes across into your interface, into your infield. Now, remembering, of course, that when it's square, we don't want any options about corner sizes, but when it's rounded and chamfered, we do. So that's exactly what we do here. So we'll say if the desktop type is rounded or desktop type is chamfered, then if it's a rounded corner, so if desktop type is rounded, it'll have an outfield in there, and that outfield will read corner radius. We will also have a chamfered option, so if desktop type is chamfered, it will read chamfer size. Our coordinates will place this outfield on top of our already existing outfield. So let's just have a look at that. Chamfered, we can't see it, or you can kind of see it in there. If I hit this check button here, item one is overlapping item three, and I get a little highlight there. So what we want to do is we want to add the height of our infield, which is 19, plus a little margin. So five pixels is a good margin. So what's that? Three plus 19 plus five is 27. So 27. Preview. There's our chamfer size. And if I change it to rounded, it changes to corner radius. Now we want to add an infield. And what will it be? Now, because we are switching out the description within our interface itself, we don't have to utilize these two different parameters here. We can just use the one because the value is the same, if you recall. So this can just be corner R. We'll keep the X and the width and the height the same, but the Y needs to be zero plus 19 plus five. So what's that? 24. Let's check our interface again, preview. There's our chamfer size at 80, rounded, and square, it's not there anymore. 
So that's good. This is getting the bones in place for our interface. Now, one of the things you would have picked up on probably straight away is that manually entering or hard coding these sizes and coordinates into your object is quite tedious. So I want to shift this over and just say I didn't have two. I had like five or ten infields that were all stacked on top of each other. And I want to shift this over five pixels. I would have to change my coordinates every time. So the way around this is to create variables for use for your X, Y, width and height of your different outfields and infields. And so what I like to do is to create a subroutine where I define all of the global sizes that I'm going to use in my outfields and infields so I can use them throughout my script. I'll call this global sizes. Well, first of all, I'll put in my dialog size. So that will be UI X max. UI out high one. We'll have UI CR for carriage return, and that will be five pixels. That's the space between the bottom of one infield and the top of the next. And there's one more called UI, and I call it CTR for centering. And that's the three pixels that you need to adjust the outfield and infield to get them to line up. So there you go, just some brief global sizes. And then under our page, so in each page, we will now define our X and Y coordinates. So our UI Y coordinate will be zero to start. Our UI X one coordinate, because we'll need more than one, equals 10. Our UI X two coordinate will be 80. And our UI in wide one equals 120. So now it's just a matter of swapping out our hard-coded sizes and coordinates for these variables. I'll just make this 0, x1. So I've, I've got in my x coordinates, my heights and my widths. To define my y coordinate, what you do is you now add to the UI Y variable to essentially do a carriage return. So it's where you need it to be. So I'll put that in here and we'll go UI Y equals UI Y plus UI in high one. So the height of my infield plus my carriage return, which is UI CTR. So now I can replace this 27 with UIY. And because this is an outfield, I need to add my centering pixels. UIY plus UI center. And then this one here will be UIY. So did I get that right? And there it is. So now if I want to change the position of any of these, what I'll do, so UI X2 equals, will go UI X1 plus 80, and I'll make UI X1 10. Sorry, I'll make this 85. So let's have a look now. There we go, it's all shifted across, all together as a unit, so I didn't have to go through and adjust these infields and outfields individually. It's a little bit wide, let's make it a little bit narrower. The width 120, let's make it 110. And they've made it narrower. So that is the trick you employ, or the strategy you employ, to make your interface creation life a bit easier. I'll wrap this one up there. Nice bite-sized chunk. Something that you can go and practice yourself. See you in the next one.